Hello and uh, welcome to another Beardy Cook Challenge. So this time it's not the North Inch Mutant Community Council, it's the RDM Parent Community Council that have contacted me and asked me to do a challenge with what's in the give or take box outside Rustic or Retro in Schoon. Now this is one I go past on a fairly regular basis. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, you can't miss it. It's the big red phone box. There's loads and loads of stuff in there. There's sent me a couple of sample bits, uh, knock up a couple of dishes, so I'm going to do one today and probably one tomorrow. Why am I going to do that? I've already had my lunch. So, on with the show. Right, so uh, I've got my ingredients here. The ever-present tin of red kidney beans, um, I've got an onion, a couple of potatoes, a chilli and a garlic out of my pearls, personal stores. I had these tomatoes hanging about on the side for ages, they needed something doing with them. And I've got a couple of spices here as well, so I've got some ground cumin, ground coriander, some paprika, and a carrot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some beanie burgers. Burgers what ain't got no beef in them. And what I'm going to do is smash up the kidney beans, along with some onion, a little bit of garlic. I'll make a salsa for it with the tomatoes, uh, some more of the onion, chilli. Make some chips for the potatoes, and then I've got red rolls to stick them all on. So, clear the decks, and we'll get started. Right, nice easy one for the chips. Gonna get your speed peeler. I'm not even gonna bother washing the potatoes because you're taking the skin off. If you like the skin on, give it a wash, give it a scrub, and then just cut them into chip shapes. And get rid of all the manky bits. Once they're done, I'm just going to cut them into chip shapes and then get some oil into them. Because I don't want to deep fry them, I'm just going to put them in the oven. I need to coat them all in oil, so I'm going to use a little freezer bag with just a spoon of oil. Jiggle everything about, get it covered in oil, and then lay them out on some tin foil roof of the oven. I'm also going to do is put a little bit of that smoked paprika in there, so that adds some lovely flavour. Of course, it's up to you what you use. You can use any kind of spice on there. If you've got chip spice from Morrison's, that's quite cool. Uh, a little bit of garlic, or if you just want to keep it simple, a little salt. Any way you want to do it, you're eating it. Uh, your chips. So that's taking their clothes off. So grab the knife. Nothing special, nothing clever. It's nice and even. Down the middle, into the chip shapes. Done. Nice and chunky them ones. The chips up. This is just going to be enough for two people. That's not more than I thought it was going to be, but I thought the potatoes were smaller than that. I'm mad. So, bung them all in the freezer bag. And then, you don't need much more than about a spoon of oil in the bag. Right side, make sure everybody's got a little blood boil on them, don't need much. A little oil goes a long way. These are especially good if you're uh, watching the calories, particularly if you're at a, uh, a world of slimming, should we say. Yeah, just a little flavour bomb in there, some smoke paprika. The advantage of this is you come away with fairly clean hands. Everything's coated in 
oil and flavour and then they're ready to go in the oven. So I've got the oven preheated to about 180, 190. The chips shouldn't take any more than about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Wait until they're golden brown. Oh. Right, so that's the chips laid out on the baking sheet, ready to go in the oven. Make sure the oven's hot before you put them in. And then, like I say, 20, 25 minutes, give or take. So we'll come back and we'll do the salsa. Right, so in order to make the salsa, what I've done is I've quartered those cherry tomatoes. If you've only got a tin of tomatoes, use about half a tin. Uh, the onion I had was a bit of a hefty one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quarter for the burgers and about a quarter for the salsa, maybe a bit less. Just judge it. So tip that in. And then you want to add a little bit of chilli. So if you run your knife down the middle, keep the root on, that holds it all together, and then just tiny weeny slices. So this is one of the hot boys. If you don't like them hot, use a jalapeno. If you don't like it hot at all, then a red pepper would give you the same taste with none of the heat. Now to that you're going to add a little bit of salt, about yeah, much, chuck that in, a good stir up, make sure everything's broken up, make sure everything gets a whack of salt. I'm also going to put some pepper in here, so I'm just going to lean back and get my pepper grinder in a minute. Let's go see if that needs any more onion. You can add loads of different things to this. If you've got some uh, green leafy herbs, you can put parsley in there, you can put coriander in there. Um, a little squirt of lemon juice or lime juice will go really, really well with it. So that's everybody mixed up. So you can do this ahead of the game. You can leave this sitting all afternoon with a bit of cling film over the top. Let the flavours really infuse. It's a nice, bright, summery flavour. The sun's out at the moment. If you're barbecuing at the weekend, this will go down a storm. So, if you've seen me before, I finally get to use the pepper grinder in action. It took me ages to find one that I liked, and then I finally saw that in Ikea. I need to go back and get some more, because I've got some different peppers, because I'm that kind of a ponzi cook. So, bringing all that together. And like I say, if you've got some coriander leaf just quickly run the knife through it and get that in and just do a bit more onion or if you've got a bit of lime juice over the top beautiful so that's that done that's going to go on top of the burgers so for the burgers what we are going to use is a tin of kidney beans this onion uh, these two spices and I'm going to grate that carrot. So I'll clear the decks and come back to you. So, ready to go. My box grater. I've taken the skin off the carrot. So I'm just going to run that up and down that. This is going to add a bit of sweetness, help with the binding. So that's that done. Gun cut middle, push that off to one side. I've got a clove of garlic here, so I'm just going to top and tail, pull the skin off. Put that in the bin. That's it. If I can't get the skin off, just rub it between your hands. And that should pull right off. But this way you're not going to get uh, attacked by any vampires if you do that. So give it a crush with the flat of the knife and then just run the knife through. Nice small slices. Last thing you want is a chonking good big bit of garlic in your burger. So 
So that's the ingredients that are going to go into the kidney beans. I'm going to and just grab my fork and start mashing. And you can do this in a food processor, or you can do it with a potato masher, or you can make your life difficult like I am and do it with a fork. So this is the tin of kidney beans, I've drained all the juice out, just throwing that away. I'm not going to go too heavy on the mash, I want some little lump of the bean in there. Now you can add any beans to these, I'm just going with a basic kidney bean, um, but if you wanted to add some chickpeas, some black beans, these are really good nutritious veg. Yeah, I think I was reading the other day, black beans have the equivalent amount of antioxidants that blueberries do, so if you've got oxidants what need anti in, your black beans your boy. Not sure what it all means, I just know they're full of fibre and make you fat. So, that's getting to a nice lumpy consistency now. Everything's pretty much broken down. It's starting to smell good. So, we'll stir in some spice. So, we'll start with everybody's favourite there's salt and a bit of pepper. Now, ground cumin, you want to go careful with this. This is quite a strong flavour, so I wouldn't say any more than about half a teaspoon. Tip that in. Maybe a whole teaspoon of ground coriander. That's a more floral, zesty, citrusy type of smell. Make sure all that's mixed in properly. thing you want is one bite that tastes of nothing but spice. Now if you wanted to stick some of the paprika in here as well, you could. In fact, I think I will. Again, not too much. Of course if you like any of these flavours and you want to go overboard the spice, feel free. Right, let's start getting these in. So Right, the garlic's going in, and onions going in. Now you want to bring these into a almost a dough, I suppose. And then once everything's incorporated, get your hands wet. We'll start making some burgers. So just stir all these in. If you ever think you need some more binding for this, an egg's a good way to go. Um, at the moment they are vegan friendly, so if you are cooking for a vegan, just make sure you don't use anything like eggs. So flour could bind it. So that's incorporated in there well. Right, so that's the mixture ready to go. So I'm going to wash my hands, come back with a plate and we'll form these into some burgers. Right, so that's one on the plate, that's about how big you're going to want them, about burger size. So if you take a lump in your hand, probably about, about that big, and then just squeeze it together, not too hard, pat it out into a burger shape. I'm actually quite impressed these are coming out in burger shapes, normally my burgers are a bit, a bit random, so I'm going to get four out of this mixture. If you're greedy like me, that's two each. A plate of chips on the side, you can easily do one each for a meal. Or stack them double high. A bit of cheese on there, a bit of Big Mac crazy. If you're a fan of the Beardy Cook on Facebook, I do do a burger sauce recipe that is just like a particular golden arched, um, oh, nearly said it, like a golden arched burger restaurant. It's, it's pretty close to be fair. You need some simple household ingredients to use. Mayo, ketchup, mustard, and some gherkins. Cut them up, stir them in in various proportions, and you are there. Right, so that's the burgers done. I'm going to wash my hands, put a pan on the heat, and we'll get these boys cooking. Okay. 
So, over at the cook station. So, cook station. Ob. So, pan is on the heat, pan is hot, pan has got oil in. So, I'm just going to lay these in. I've got a little bit of oil in there just to make sure they don't stick. a bit delicate about this making sure they don't break up you can rest these in the fridge um, they should come together a bit better or you can freeze them cook them from frozen um, if you're cooking them from frozen I'd probably consider sticking them in the oven so they're in the oven and the chips they're not far off being done so I'm gonna cook these burgers down and I'll see you when I'm ready to present right so this is me pretty much ready to go that's the last burger on. That's three that I've already cooked. Uh, I have found them a little crumbly while I've been cooking them. So if you want to use an extra binder like uh, a bit of breadcrumbs or an egg, that might just help them stay together. I've just been rearranging them slightly in the pan. So I'm just toasting these buns in the dry pan now. That'll just give them a nice golden brown texture. And if we open that up, you can see nothing because of the steam. The chips are done. So that's oven off. They're ready to go. Just keep them warm. So, just get a nice little toast on those buns. Just give that another. These are some brioche buns, I absolutely love them. But any will do. If you're feeling healthy, you can put these in between some uh, lettuce leaves. I've done that before. Right, so that's nicely toasted. There's the chopping board. What I'll do. Yeah, that's done as well. So. That's that one. Oop, ready to go. So let's plop them down there on the bun. And then, oop. Oh, the nails. Get some of this salsa on top. Beanie burger, ready to go, and I'll show you the finished article when I've got some chips on the plate. So, there you have it, finished article. One burger, handful of chips, all flavoured with smoked paprika, and that, I don't know, too bad, does it? So, that's me, Beardy Cook, signing out for tonight. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a, another one. I'm going to do a quick pasta recipe with a couple of the other bits that I saw in the Rustic Retro Give or Take box. So thanks to Liz Lindsay from the RDM community page for making another challenge for me. And if you've got any questions or you want to join the Beardy Cook Facebook page, please do. Don't forget to use the give or take boxes. They are a brilliant idea. If you can give, do give. If you need to take, don't be ashamed to take. So see you soon. Bye.